the news day continues here on One News Now. I'm Pauline Verzosa. Almost 3 million Filipino Americans will cast their votes in the upcoming U.S. elections. Some of them, though, have already voted by mail. Democrat Phil Ams expressed support for Kamala Harris because of her background. Meanwhile, Republican Phil Ams are leaning towards Trump because of his stance on various issues such as abortion. I'm always a Democrat. You are. Okay. Yeah, I'm very proud to say because I um, researched everything, studied everything, yeah. and with our culture in the Philippines, I know where to stand. People can always change. May mga good side kasi tsaka bad side ang, yung, ang democratic tsaka ano. Pero we are mostly, uh, for me, I mean, my community as a Christian is we, we tend to be uh, we less evil. Abortion. No, no, I really don't. That's why. That's why. <laughs> that's why, yeah. That's why I, my, my heart is with Republican because I'm not supposed to be like that. God is not happy with that. Now, geopolitical analyst Don McLean Gill says the U.S. Philippines alliance will stay strong and relevant regardless of who wins the election. Here's an excerpt from his interview on the big story. If I were President Bombo Marcos, who would I want to win and why? Right, so these are very interesting but very uh, complex and comprehensive questions that require comprehensive answers as well. Um, well, when we look into this uh, from a geopolitical perspective, that of security and intersecting with geoeconomics, for instance, if you look at China, um, China would prefer perhaps, um, you know, a Harris administration, particularly because it is still subject to change. And that is something that they have uh, least experience with. Uh, they would rather see perhaps some sort of continuity uh, with that that is uh, currently being demonstrated under the Biden administration. Um, and they may have some reservations about the unpredictability of a Trump administration. But on the flip side, you could also say that the Biden administration has, in fact, been quite robust. <laughs> Uh, institution <laughs> uh, uh, security arrangement cooperation um, that has uh, significantly impacted uh, the security calculations of China. Um, however, what we can actually see is that uh, under the Trump administration, in fact, uh, there were more robust policies as well that were largely um, pushing back against China's expansionist claims, particularly in the West. So in, in both scenarios, really, there are uh, negative implications and perhaps some positive implications for Beijing. Um, but of course, uh, it will depend on the nature and the trajectory of structural uh, conditions that would impact uh, the region. Um, and if you look into the Philippines, for instance, you know, I'd like to say that the Philippine-U.S. alliance would remain relevant regardless of who is in charge. Um, but of course, uh, one important thing that we talk about, of course, uh, would be the nature of how we would deal with the United States, be it a Harris administration or a Trump administration. If we look into a Harris administration, we would see a relatively more continuity in institutional building. Um, but at the same time, um, there is also that emphasis on the Global South issue um, in addressing the U.S.-China power competition through capacity building. Right. Well, Donald Trump and Kamala Harris are scrambling for an edge in a tight contest for the U.S. presidency. Republican nominee Donald Trump campaigned in Pennsylvania. There, he vowed to invoke the Alien Enemies Act of 1798 to, quote, launch the largest deportation program of criminals in American history. He is due to campaign later in Pittsburgh and Grand Rapids, Michigan. Meanwhile, in Allentown, Harris predicted victory and promised to be a president for all Americans. She recently got a hand from rapper Fat Joe, who is of Puerto Rican and Cuban descent. Seven officials under the office of the vice president may be placed under the immigration lookout. Marian Enriquez has that report. 
Papahanap natin. Pag nasa it sila for content, ipapahanap natin sila. The House Committee on Good Government has formally asked the Department of Justice to issue a lookout bulletin against seven officials under the office of the Vice President and Department of Education. These seven snubbed the hearing on confidential funds and were subpoenaed on October 17. It's not clear if they will turn up for the House hearing scheduled tomorrow. They are Chief of Staff Sulaika Lopez, Assistant Chief of Staff and Bids and Awards Committee Chair Lemuel Ortonio, Administrative and Financial Services Director Rosaline Sanchez, Special Disbursing Officers Gina Acosta and Edward Fajarda, Chief Accountant Julieta Villa del Rey, and Former Education Assistant Secretary Sunshine Chari Fajarda. While they have no pending cases, the House Committee allegedly got word that some of them have been trying to leave the country. In a letter to Justice Secretary Crispin Boeing Remulla, Committee Chair Congressman Joel Chu said the testimonies of the officials are crucial and if they flee, it could significantly hinder the investigation. The DOJ has yet to respond to the request. Recall that the ongoing House hearing was based off of the Commission and Audit report that found that Vice President Sara Duterte allegedly spent 125 million pesos in confidential funds in just 11 days in 2022. The Commission and Audit has issued a notice of disallowance on 73 million pesos out of the 125 and directed Duterte, along with their staff Acosta and Villa del Rey, to return the amount to the government. In addition, one of the key findings at the last House hearing was that 16 million pesos was used by the OVP to lease 34 safe houses that cost around 91,000 pesos daily. Duterte has long argued that all these efforts to bring up her office's use of confidential funds were just meant to malign her reputation. House Deputy Majority Leader Bong Tevez says this is one reason Duterte's trust and performance ratings have been declining. Pagpatuloy ka nagtatago at patuloy mong hindi sinasagot yung mga tanong na dapat mong sagutin, talagang bababa ang rating mo dahil paano ka pagtitiwalahan ng ating mga kapwa Pilipino kung hindi mo sinasagot yung mga tinatanong sa'yo. An immigration lookout bulletin instructs the immigration officers to alert authorities should the subjects attempt to leave the country, but it does not prevent the person from leaving. Only the courts can issue a hold departure order. For News 5, Marian Enriquez, we are One News. House Speaker Martin Romualdez fired back at critics of the House Quad Committee for investigating the previous administration's war on drugs campaign. Romualdez expressed confidence that they are on the right side of history and any attempts to stop the hearing will not succeed. The House Speaker added that the hearing on the war on drugs will help Filipinos to not return to, quote, Panahon ng kadiliman at kasamaan. Dahil unti-unti na natin nakikita ang liwanag at katotohanan, asaan natin na lalo pang titindi ang pag sa ating institusyon, subalit hindi tayo matitinag. Hindi tayo papayag na muling bumalik ang panahon ng kadiliman at kasamaan. Floods across Spain has now killed at least 217 people, with dozens of others still unaccounted for. Almost all of the deaths occurred in the Valencia region and more than 60 in the suburb of Paiporta. Some 2,500 more soldiers arrived in flood-hit areas to reinforce efforts to locate bodies and clear debris. The army sent about 5,000 soldiers over the weekend to help distribute food and water. The Spanish government says they would allow severely affected areas to access emergency funds. And those are the top stories of the hour. I'm Pauline Berzosa. We are One News.